this set is so nice <gasps> you know when something is not so nice you're already envisioning yourself wearing it so much up until the point that the seams start to break and you have to mend it <laughs> The patterns I'm going to be using for this pyjama set I have done in a previous tutorial. I'm going to link it in the description box and somewhere on the screen if you haven't seen it already because I literally shared how to make the shirt and the shorts from scratch so you can use your measurement to achieve your own patterns to make your own set. And the fabric I'm going to be using is this beautiful cotton fabric here as you can see. I also grabbed some buttons and other materials which I shared in this pattern tutorial. I have gone in to pin down all of the patterns for the top and one side of the short so only the front could fit on this side of my table. I have my sleeve, my back facing, front facing and then my back and my front and one pair of the collar there. I'm just going to go ahead and cut out all of these pieces and I think I have about a meter and a half left here so i'll need to cut the back of the short still but i'm really praying and hoping that the fabric left will be enough to make a trouser so i have um short and trouser in the same fabric that i can wear with the same shirt that's my prayer and my plan i'm really hoping oh i'm hoping it goes that way else i'm gonna have to go back and buy extra fabric which i'm trying to avoid but we'll see we will see. Let me go ahead and cut these out and start sewing. With all of my patterns pinned down in place, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the different parts of the pyjama set. The sleeve, the front, the back, the collar pieces, as well as all the parts I need for the shorts and just prepare them ready to be joined together. I have my main front as well as the pieces for my shorts all ready to be stitched in place. Now these are all of the pieces that I cut. I have pieces for my shorts and my trousers. And essentially what I did for the trousers was I extended the leg to a length I wanted. I also have my sleeve, my facing, which I have fused on the wrong side with some iron-on interfacing. I have my Riviera collar, which I cut two pairs of and I have fused as well. I also have my front and my back shirt pieces, which I'm going to be stitching together first before working on the shorts in this tutorial. Starting with the shirt, I have put right sides together of my front and my back pieces and I've also pinned the side seams and the shoulder seams and I'm going to be joining them first. If you want to fix your sleeve on the flat, I recommend joining your shoulder seams alone, attaching your sleeves before joining the side seams. It's a lot easier to put sleeves into armholes that way. But now that I'm done joining my shoulder and my side seams, I'm going to set this piece aside to focus on working on my facing panels. These I'm going to join along the shoulder seam for the left and the right shoulder and then overlock those seams and overlock along the outer edge which is going to sit on the inside of the shirt so it's nice and tidy even within. Now once you have that in place I'm going to go ahead to join my collar pieces along the center back edges first so we have one piece that we can then join together along the top edge. After joining the center back pieces, I gave it a nice press to open up that seam and I've pinned the collar pieces right sides together and I'm going to be sewing up the top edge like so along that long outer curve edge which is going to become the bottom of the collar. I'll work my way to the other side and after doing this I turned the collar piece inside out, gave it a nice press so it is nice and flat and ready to be joined to the neckline of the shirt. Now it's important you have the collar piece ready and your facing piece ready because essentially we're going to sandwich this collar piece along the neckline of the shirt to create a Riviere collar slash lapel situation. Now first up, I'm pinning in the collar along the neckline like so, front to front, center back to center back, shoulder seam to shoulder seam. And this is a point that if you have your notches in place, it will come in really, really useful because you are essentially joining curved seams and straight seams at some point and that can be a bit tricky. Now once the entire collar is pinned and in place, you would need to grab your facing and pin the facing along the center front edges, the neckline and down the other center front edge. So when you stitch with one continuous stitch 
from one side of the center front around the front and back neckline down the other side of the center front you automatically join the facing the collar to the neckline of the shirt once that was all done i gave that seam a nice press put it on my mannequin just to check that i liked how everything was looking and this is the shape of the collar and the lapel you have the freedom to make yours a bit more rounded if you don't like how pointy this is and you would need to do that at the pattern cutting stage now moving on to join my sleeves and i folded them this way with right sides together and i'm going to be sewing up the side seam so i have the sleeve ready to be fitted into the armhole of the shirt now i stitched on a one centimeter seam allowance first and then went ahead to overlock those seams to secure it and starting with either the left or the right side it doesn't really matter i'm going to just pass the sleeve into the armhole and align side seam point shoulder seam point and just put a few pins before taking this to my machine to sew the sleeve into the armhole now this method is a lot more trickier and can be slightly more frustrating to do but it is possible it is doable i promise you after stitching the sleeve into the armhole i went ahead to overlock this seam so it's nice and tidy as well on the inside of the shirt before going ahead to overlock the entire hemline of my pyjama shirt. Now once I had overlocked the hemline, I went in to fold that hemline in by one centimeter so I have it nice and hemmed ready to be fitted on. So I've popped on the shirt. Please ignore the dress I'm wearing underneath. This is my everyday staying at home dress. But this is what it looks like on. That's what it looks like from the back and the front. <laughs> I wore it and I was like, why does this look like I'm going to Hawaii on holiday? It has a like holiday Hawaiian feel. And it even makes for like a really casual like um, shirt jacket situation. If the sleeves are long, and the color was thicker. This would have easily been like a summer jacket, but that's the feel so far. I've hemmed the bottom of the top and the sleeve, and I'm just going to focus on now putting buttonholes and buttons to finish this off so I can close it like this. It actually turned out so, um, so smart like it looks really smart i think it's because the interfacing i use on the color is on the thicker side so the color is like gege -ge, standing well uh, it's going to be a, a revealing situation here but i'm wearing this to go to sleep only my husband is looking at me in bed so that's fine um so i think i'll just put one two i think i'll end up fixing just three buttons if i'm being very honest because the first button will go here second one here and the third one there and the buttons are actually on the bigger side so Rather than five that I initially thought I would need, I think I would do three. So the collar and the lapel, they have a moment for themselves. But just so I should come in and check in with you guys, show you the progress so far. Yeah, this is where we are. <laughs> The next thing I'm going to be doing is sewing the buttonholes onto the shirt and I always like to mark exactly where I want my buttonholes to be before taking this to the machine. I do have a dedicated tutorial showing how I use my domestic machine to stitch buttonholes onto shirts, jackets, so on and so forth and I'm going to link that on the screen so you can check it out if you haven't seen it already. But once I have my three buttonholes stitched in place, I cut the buttonholes open and then go to the other side of the center front to stitch the buttons on this side of the shirt. Now, once I was done stitching the buttons, I knew the shirt was all done and could be set aside so I could focus on working on the pair of shorts and even trials that I didn't really show the filming of, but it was essentially the same gist in terms of putting all the pieces together. Now for my short, I have put the right leg and the left leg pieces together of the front and the back. So I'm going to be sewing up the side seams on the outer and the inner seams. So when we have left leg front and back stitched, right leg front and back stitched, we can then join them up the crouch line. Now I'm just going in here to overlock those side seams first before setting them together like this and i'm going to be pinning the center front edges 
that midpoint edge and the center back edges together so with one continuous stitch we can join the entire crouch line of the shorts this is the same way you would join a pair of trousers the only difference is the trouser has a longer leg now i'm just going in here to stitch along that crouch line like so after doing the normal straight stitch on a one centimeter seam allowance i went back in to secure that seam with an overlock stitch as well if you don't have an overlocker you can use bias binding or use a zigzag stitch to secure your seam now this is what the short is looking like because i included enough seam allowance on that waist for the elastic waistband or the elastic tunnel all i'm just doing here is folding the waistline downwards by about an inch and i'm going to sew along that entire waistline seam towards the bottom of that edge leaving this part open and that would create a tunnel that i can pass my elastic band through now that we have that stitched and ready to be fixed with the elastic i have attached a safety pin to one edge of my elastic the elastic length is my waist measurement minus 10 to 15 centimeters so it's you know has a bit of stretch and it pulls in the waistline of the shorts even more now i've pulled out both ends of the elastic and i'm going to be joining them using a zigzag stitch so we have that fixed on the inside of the waistline or the tunnel and then i'm just going to go back in and stitch that opening that we left closed so it's nice and secure on the waist the last thing i'm just doing in here is to fold and sew the hemline of both legs of my shorts to finish this pajama set so i'm all done making the pajama set i have my shirt on i'm going to insert clips of me wearing the shirt with the matching shorts and the matching trousers so you see what they look like on but woo, this set is so nice <gasps> you know when something is not so nice you're already envisioning yourself wearing it so much up until the point that the seams start to break and you have to mend it it's so nice and it's so comfortable and i think because it's cotton i don't even feel hot wearing this now i made it short sleeve so i can start wearing it now because it's still a little bit warm but even in the future if i wanted to do like a long sleeve version i know i just had to extend the sleeve a little bit more maybe add like a tiny cuff and i have a matching long sleeve version to go with my set i could even make like a dressing gown just go wild with the print but this is how it turned out the fit is immaculate i mean see now oh look wait is it just me or can i possibly wear this as a shirt out because the neckline is so nice like the lapel and the collar situation is so beautiful that i feel like i could possibly wear this when it's warm though when it's actually warm because if it's cold that's suicide but i could possibly wear this with like a pair of white jeans blue jeans would that be would that be wrong it's just so nice like the fit is just so beautiful and it sits very nicely on the body but this is it all done let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below if you'll be recreating this please tag me on social media at kim dave designs if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up i'm going to leave all links to materials and all the things that i use in the description box down below so if you needed somewhere to just go double check you have that to do so okay thank you so much for watching this video i love love you guys so much and i appreciate your support i will see you in my next one see you in my next one when the when the project goes so well and you're like hyped for no reason having a party for one in your studio that's me right now <laughs> thanks guys i'll see you in my next one bye there's a whole stash <laughs> of kente <laughs> it's behind the camera you cannot see but there's a whole stash of kente i was like I don't know where she's from, but I think she's from Ghana. Like, there was nothing more obvious than that. I was like, hmm. I was like, you're from Ghana, right? <laughs>